Hey everybody, so here I am again, out amongst the trees to talk a little bit with y'all, and yeah, I'm doing all right, managing a little bit better since last time uh, I spoke with you candidly, put out a couple of shorts, that definitely helped with regards to being a little bit more mindful and uh, coping a little bit with the world at large. Not saying things have gotten better, better with the world at large, but definitely I'm managing my expectations to some degree. So, just thought I'd give you a little update of what's coming down the pike and some other stuff. So, as I mentioned in my previous video log, I'm going to be doing a little bit of traveling. You've already seen the fruits of my labor on that front a little bit with my quick little excursion to Canada for that island meditation video. And I've got a couple more things planned, but definitely the big project is on the horizon a couple of weeks away. And so I'll probably be doing a lot of filming for that and uh, editing and getting stuff set up with regards to that. So I might not have as much content uh, on here as maybe you've become accustomed to in these past few weeks or months. Sirens. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know that's why, is because I'm working on a big project. And I, when I say big, I'm like hoping it's going to turn out to be feature length. And it's going to require a lot of my attention and focus and, like I said, time to edit and get just right. I'll try to get some supplemental stuff out there as best as I can as well. Maybe something like this, just a quick update or my quick thoughts on some piece of media or something like that. But just know that I haven't abandoned the site yet again or I haven't abandoned my <laughs> channel yet again. For a couple months at a time, I would disappear just because I didn't find inspiration or didn't find any sort of motivation to stay with it. And that's definitely not the case now. I have plenty of motivation and plenty of inspiring moments. It's just a matter of being able to maybe manage, manage my time with them. But what's been keeping my inspiration going is definitely continuing to open my mind to a variety of new experiences through film. And I've spoken about a couple of those in their own little mini essays or reflected on a, briefly in the last video log. But I figured I'd talk a little bit about some promising new uh, explorations here because we're in July, and as we all know, around July is the time for the summer half-off Criterion sale. So this morning, went out to Barnes & Noble, got myself a couple of half-price Blu-rays and DVDs from Criterion. Uh, one is a very familiar one that I'm a big fan of, and I've been wanting to get the physical copy of it for a while. And the others, I've heard lots of great things about and I can't wait to watch them and hopefully that'll be more fuel to the fire for me going into my feature length project. Uh, so the first one uh, is actually one that I have seen before and like I said it's one of my absolute favorites. Uh, it's a phenomenal film from 1955, Night of the Hunter. Robert Mitchum at his absolute best and Charles Lawton's direction is so stylistic and unique for that time period. And I'm honestly very sort of, not depressed, but deflated that he never did another movie after this. But um, no, there's a lot to really enjoy about this. I love Robert Mitchum's performance in this, which is unbelievably creepy, unnerving, and wild at times. Some of his expressions are absolutely, like, I, they can be humorous at times because there are moments he does go big and bold with his expressions and with his deliveries. But then there are times where it is absolutely just cold, subdued, and sinister. And it's this wonderful kind of mixture of both the impl the very intentional sort of campiness that can be in a neo-noir thriller like this and the absolutely like grounded sort of 
devastating look at, say, manipulation and abuse that is embodied in uh, Harry Powell. And of course, followed up from Mitchum is this phenomenal turn from Shelley Winters, who is kind of suckered in by uh, Powell and his machinations. But she is equally as genuine and provoking in the in the film. And it's been a while since I've gotten to see it, let alone see it on not a big screen, but at least a, a wide screen TV. So I'm looking forward to revisiting Night of the Hunter quite a bit. One of my favorites. And so these other three that I purchased today, they're all movies that I've heard about but never have gotten around to actually watching. So I figured now is the great opportunity to be able to. Uh, so the next one I got was Stranger Than Paradise. And this is from Jim Jarmusch back in 1984. I'm, I'm a mark for some Jarmusch stuff so far. Uh, in the past 10 years or so, I've really become a fan of stuff like, say, Dead Man. Really enjoyed The Only Lovers Left Alive. Uh, I actually really like Ghost Dog, Way of the Samurai, which uh, is in the Criterion Collection as well. But I really didn't know much about Jarmusch's earlier stuff. And I believe this is his first film. And it just, based off of reading about it a little bit, um, on my own and off the back here, it feels like it's something that would be more tuned to my modern sensibilities and tastes, where it's got a little bit of a drier humor to it, a little bit more of a low key kind of, I guess, hangout type of movie. It's not so much, I guess, a straightforward, like intricate step-by-step -step plot, but it is a series of just like vignettes that happen to a circle of characters. And that's very much in the vein of stuff I definitely am into right now and stuff that I'm definitely experimenting with or going to experiment with uh, in the months to come. So I am looking forward to exploring a little bit more of the Jarnish catalog. I understand he is a very acquired taste, really eccentric. I don't know the man personally, but I just like his body of work so far that I've seen and hoping to just continue to add to it. The next one here is one that absolutely I've been hearing is fundamental, and that is uh, Bicycle Thieves. We never actually got to watch it in my film appreciation classes. We saw, saw stuff more like Jules and Jim, Eight and a Half, and so forth. Uh, so I'm really curious what uh, Bicycle Thieves will present to me with regards to uh, this, type of, this type of filmmaking, especially after coming off a lot of Fellini stuff. I... I, I, I'm out of the purchases I've gotten this so far, like this is the one I'm absolutely like looking forward to the most of uh, viewing just because I don't know what to expect with this one. With Jarmish and uh, with, of course, Night of the Hunter, you know, I'm pretty familiar with uh, a little bit of their sensibilities and the style that might be utilized. I don't know what to expect from Bicycle Thieves, so yeah, can't wait. And finally, uh, this is another one I've been hearing a lot about. And how I mentioned earlier about uh, Jarmusch's work and how maybe in terms of character or story, that's more along the lines of where I feel I'm going in terms of my own style. This is what I hear, from what I hear, is absolutely in terms of execution of the film itself, what I've been trying to do lately, especially with my Joel Haver Oscar submission, that blending of being documentary, being improvised, and being a fictional sort of story. Um, it's a close-up. I, I don't know much about the actual plot of it. I've just heard from many sources that it's a one-of-a-kind experience in terms of that blending of realities, in terms of that being able to discern a distinct line, if there is a distinct line between uh, what is documentary and what is the fictionalized kind of representation or this, the actual fictional story taking place. Between this and Bicycle Thieves, I, those are the two that I feel, because I have no frame of reference, I'm looking forward to the most uh, exploring. And who knows, maybe something like this will be what really kind of kickstarts more of my preparation for my feature length project. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always on the lookout for new things to appreciate, new things to watch. One of the streaming services that I feel has been doing a phenomenal job of exposing me to newer things, or at least things outside the realm of the typical American system and blockbuster system is 
HBO Max. I know there are a lot of other more catered sort of um, services and platforms that have a more specific type of focus on, say, like documentaries or international film. But I feel HBO Max has definitely given me the most varied palette or menu of items. Um, so many things in my queue that I'm going to catch up on. Hopefully here with the, uh, with the three-day weekend. Maybe I'll get a little bit of the Apu trilogy in there. I know I have day trippers uh, in my queue somewhere there. And just, just an opportunity to just keep expanding my taste because I genuinely feel that's one of the big sort of drawbacks, at least of current American culture right now, especially when it comes to films, is that idea that everyone has this clear-cut, defined preference already established in what they want in their movies. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with you being a fan of, say, Star Wars or Marvel movies or... Um, you know, Adam Sandler comedies or things like that. It's just, it can't just be all that all the time. At least that's my reasoning for it. My feeling on it is I can't just sit with those types of movies all the time and just revisit them ad nauseum. I need to intersplice amongst those viewings stuff that challenges me a little bit more, stuff that is outside sometimes the realm of my preference. And that's what's helped me kind of expand my preferences, honestly. I feel really in the past decade or so, I've been able to witness a whole variety of different ways to tell stories through film and media overall that I never would have been given the opportunity to if I'd just stuck to my rote tastes, as it were. If I'd stuck into purely, let's say, the pop culture nerd uh, entrenchment. I'm not saying I want to go into the other way either and become like an elitist or what people call like a film bro or whatever that definition is now because I definitely don't feel like that. I, I again just feel like you enjoy what you enjoy and certainly my comedic or hyperbolic views on certain movies has lessened as the years have gone on. I'm trying to mature and work my way out of that a little bit because I don't know, it's just not that funny to me anymore, or that appealing to kind of play into like, oh, so-and-so sucks and whatever. It's like, it works for somebody. It's out there in the media you know, spectrum, and it must work for somebody, because it does well, or it can do fairly well. These movies work for people, and hopefully they'll work for me. And hopefully my movies, or my film shorts or my video logs, whatever I throw out here onto the channel. I hope it works for you. But I'm curious. I, I'm genuinely curious for any other Criterion fans out there as we get into July, what are going to be your half-off purchases? I'm, I'm not, I don't even know if I'll stop at these four. I'm, I'm always in a constant state of acquiring new media, which is a bit of a problem, I know. Uh, what are some of your projects that you're looking forward to uh, creating perhaps in this summer of productivity. I'm going to try to keep churning out as much content as possible, but understand if I disappear for a while, it's not because I've lost interest again or I've slipped back into depression or anything like that. It's because probably I'm working on this larger project and dedicating a lot more of my time and focus to it because I hope for it to be, again, something unique to me and something special for a viewer. Um, so that's it. Thank you. Bye.